So we have had some fun talking about free motion quilting, but now it is time to talk about rulers. And I love ruler work on a quilt. I think that it can make it look really modern and really fresh and just add that really nice geometric element to a quilt that really sets off your piecing. So let's go over a few of the supplies that you'll need for ruler work. I know that I talked a little bit in the supplies video about this foot. This is the ruler foot for my Juki 2010. And your ruler foot may look a little bit different, but the common element is gonna be this really thick kind of circle area around where the needle goes. So the needle is gonna go up and down through this little circle area. This is my kind of standard free motion quilting foot. And you can see that from the top, they look very similar, but when you look at them from the side, the free motion quilting foot has a very flat profile, whereas this ruler foot has a nice chunky, about quarter inch kind of size difference from this very thin, regular hopping foot. You'll need to check your manufacturer, your manufacturer's website, your machine manual, um, whatever you need to, to find what ruler foot is gonna fit on your machine. There are some aftermarket uh, ruler feet available that will fit a wide variety of machines, but this is one of those things where I really suggest buying the kind of machine brand for your specific machine, if at all possible, because you are gonna be sewing with a sharp needle right next to your hand, and I just like to eliminate any kind of um, margin for error when I'm dealing with high-speed machinery near my hands. So be sure to get a ruler foot. It is absolutely essential. The other absolutely essential thing that you're going to need is quilting rulers. And these are specialty rulers that are made for machine quilting, not rotary cutting. And the difference is all in the width. So this is a machine quilting ruler. It is the Slim from Angela Walters. And this is a rotary cutting ruler. They look fairly similar, but a rotary cutting ruler is usually gonna have measurement marks that go all the way to the edges. And the other way to tell them apart is the width. So a rotary cutting ruler is usually about an eighth of an inch thick. And a free motion quilting ruler is usually about a quarter of an inch thick. That extra width is absolutely essential. And what it does is it works with the quarter inch kind of circle around your ruler foot to give a really nice solid connection. So as you are quilting and running this ruler along the foot, it's not gonna slip under or over that foot. If you're using one of these regular free motion quilting feet, it would be very easy to just slide that ruler right over that really slim profile and then your needle is gonna come down right on top of it. And that is something you really want to avoid. I know it's very tempting to not buy some fairly expensive rulers, but if you are using this ruler, and these rulers aren't cheap either, so don't put them in harm's way. But if you are using one of these rulers, it would be very easy to let this slip over a traditional foot or under a ruler foot. And if you bring your needle down onto a ruler, there are, it's almost guaranteed that you're going to break a needle. You could break your ruler. You could throw off the timing on your machine. You could do some serious damage to your machine that is gonna cause you to have to have it repaired, probably professionally, and it's gonna cost you a lot of time without your machine and a lot of expense. And that's assuming your machine can be repaired. I did it once with my long arm and it was very scary. <laughs> my long arm made a terrible noise and um, I have been very careful not to do it since. So now you know you need some quilting rulers. Let's talk about my favorite types. Now, I have a lot of quilting rulers. I keep them all downstairs by my long arm where I traditionally use them most often. And I have everything from really tiny rulers all the way up to gigantic big curves. But like many of the differences between quilting on a long arm and quilting on a regular machine, there is a sense of scale. So these are the rulers that I would suggest getting to start. And you can always build your collection as you go. Now, you don't have to buy these exact brands or anything, but it's the kind of style and utility of these rulers. And the first is a basic 
straight edge ruler. Now this is Slim from Angela Walters and it's a really nice kind of palm sized ruler that will allow you to make all those straight lines, stitching in the ditch or doing some little dot to dot quilting. Uh, this is a really nice flexible ruler. It does have two kind of corner points and two rounded points. If you do want to round off your corners in any way then, then you have both of those options. I usually don't quilt around a ruler but you may find that you do. <laughs> After the straight edge ruler, I like these two curved rulers. And this ruler is actually probably my most used ruler on my long arm, other than my straight edge. It is just a super handy little ruler. This curve is perfect for continuous lines in um, small squares, like a nine patch. It's just a really nice small ruler that I can really move around quickly and get exactly where I need to go. When I'm quilting with curves, odds are this ruler is, is on the long arm ready to be used. I also find having a somewhat larger curve ruler handy is great. These two are both by the Quilted Pineapple and I have all of her rulers. They're amazing. I like that they're kind of this green color. Um, you can tell like these clear rulers tend to disappear on the fabric, but I can always find this wherever I set it down. Um, the other thing that I like about her curved rulers is that you can quilt along the outside or the inside and it will give you the same curve. A lot of the curved rulers out there are kind of multi-purpose and so you can't um, quilt here and then turn it around and quilt here and get like a nice mirrored image. And that's handy because it can be really awkward to kind of quilt in certain directions, especially if you're working on a long arm. On your regular machine, you can always turn your work a little bit and kind of get a more comfortable angle to work from. But on a long arm, you're kind of stuck with how your quilt is loaded. So I really like these rulers that um, give me that flexibility to quilt on either side of the curve. You may also find getting a circle ruler really handy. This came as part of a set from Handy Quilter, but I'm sure that there are other round rulers out there. There's a lot of round shapes that you might end up quilting. Uh, clamshells come to mind, um, little flower things in the center of a block. Um, a, a round ruler is, is really handy. And I, again, I like this size because it kind of fits right under my hand really comfortably. I can use it and spin it and move it without, um, having to kind of rearrange everything that I'm working on. Whatever rulers you're looking at, I do recommend keeping them fairly small about palm sized when you're working on a domestic machine. Imagine if this was my quilt sandwich and it was all bunched up around my needle area right here. If I'm using a really gigantic ruler, something that was, you know, twice as long as this, then I would have to have that much area nice and flat to be able to use that ruler. And that's just not always possible quilting on a regular machine because you do need to kind of have that ability to bunch up your fabric to really work on a smaller area. So keep your rulers fairly palm sized. They should feel nice and comfortable in your hands. And I wouldn't go too much bigger than this 12 inch curve kind of ruler. Now I do wanna say that you don't have to quilt exactly this curve every time, even if this is the ruler you have. Okay, so this is a piece of paper here. And let's say that this was the curve that I was aiming for, but I didn't have this ruler. The only ruler I had was this much smaller curve. That's okay. If you are quilting, and I'll, I'll quilt just a little bit away from this line, you can quilt and kind of rotate your ruler a little bit to kind of follow this line. It's gonna be a, a little bit more difficult to get it nice and smooth, but you don't have to just follow your rulers they are limitless with a little imagination. Now, this was with a pen and paper, but it gives you the idea that you can slowly rotate your rulers to kind of mirror the curve. So the curves on these rulers are not the same, but you can fudge your ruler to follow a curve in your quilt. You don't have to have a gazillion rulers and every possible imaginable curve. You can kind of fudge them a little bit as you're quilting to kind of even out your curve and make it match. 
So let's do a little bit of ruler rug quilting. I have drawn out just a simple nine patch on this little square of fabric for us to practice on. And I think we should start really simple. I have my slim ruler here. Any small straight edge ruler you have will work. I know uh, many of you might see those like multi-purpose rulers. Anything with like one good straight edge is gonna work for you here. I like kind of the simplicity of just a plain straight ruler, but if you have one of those four in one rulers, then definitely use it. So we're going to start this like we would any free motion quilting design. We are going to bring up our thread kind of off the edge of our quilt just a little bit and um, start stitching and then we'll begin our design on the actual surface of the quilt top. Bring up my bobbin thread and as I move my quilt sandwich away and hold on to my top thread you can see that bobbin thread loop come up you can just grab it and pull the whole thing through. Now, if you are starting in the center of your quilt or after a bobbin change and you're kind of in the center, now you have both of those tails available to um, thread through a needle and weave into your quilt top. Or you can take a couple of stitches right here, lock them and trim them. There's a whole section in the previous video on starting and stopping your thread ends. Now my machine is set to have the needle down whenever I stop sewing. And that is a really handy thing to do when you're free motion quilting, especially ruler work, so that you are kind of free to pause, take a break, reposition your hands, grab a different ruler, or move your quilt. Now, when you're moving your quilt, do be careful. Your needle is holding your place in your quilt, but it's just a tiny needle. So just take some care when you are moving your quilt sandwich around that you're not pulling on that needle too much. Now we have these little nine areas to quilt in and I thought we would do just a little dot to dot design in most of the blocks. We'll see where it takes us. So in this first block I want to do kind of a dot to dot diamond design. So I'm going to mark an area and you can eyeball this but I'm going to place a mark here so that you guys can see about an inch in from the corner. Now I could measure this really carefully but this is just a test. It's not that important to me. If I was working on a really important quilt, then I would be measuring all these inches. But the focus here today is to learn how to use the ruler. So I have my ruler in my hand and I am going to slide it so that it is up against my ruler foot. Now it's time to place your hand. Now I don't like to wear a glove on this hand, on my ruler hand when I am using my rulers, but that is up to you. If you find that you still really benefit from the glove, like that kind of sticky, tactile, um, grippy surface of the glove, then by all means wear the glove. I like to really kind of be able to feel uh, the ruler in my hand. So that's just my personal preference. I do usually wear a glove on my kind of quilt hand, my other hand, but I don't have one on today since I'm just working on the sample. Now when I hold the ruler, I'm going to put my hand on it and I'm going to use my ring finger kind of in that crack of the ruler and quilt sandwich area. And that's just going to allow me to apply a little bit of pressure to keep that ruler from sliding away from my ruler foot. And then my pinky is going to help kind of just grab the surface of my quilt a little bit. And my other three fingers are going to hold that ruler in place. My other hand is going to help control the quilt sandwich. And when I'm quilting, all three of these things, my hands, the ruler, and the quilt sandwich are going to move as a unit. So I'm not moving the ruler at all. I'm not sliding in on the quilt surface. It's there. It's together. It's a guide that's going to move with your quilt sandwich. So my needle is here, kind of in the corner of this block, and I want to get to this dot down here. Now, when you are drawing up against a ruler, you are making that mark right along the ruler's edge. But when you're quilting, your needle is going to be about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of this ruler. So you need to accommodate for that when you are quilting. So you can see my dot is right here. Now, if I had the ruler so that it was right on the edge of that dot, like I would if I was drawing, I would miss that mark by about a quarter of an inch. You can see right here, the edge of my ruler ends here against my foot, but my needle is all the way over here. That's a quarter of an inch distance that you need to work with. 
So instead of aiming for the dot, I'm gonna aim here, about a quarter of an inch away from the dot. This is probably the trickiest thing you need to keep in mind when you are quilting with rulers, but it will become second nature as you kind of get a little bit more experience and you'll get really good at kind of visualizing that quarter of an inch. So now that I'm all lined up, my ruler hand is ready, my quilt hand is ready. I'm going to move this whole unit, keeping just a little bit of pressure between the ruler and the ruler foot. I'm not pushing hard, it's just enough to maintain contact. You don't wanna be drifting away from it. Okay, I've hit my dot and I have two options. I can rotate my work and continue to sew kind of towards and away from me, which is like a really natural sewing motion. Or the benefit of working with rulers is that you don't have to do that. If you were using a walking foot, then you would have to rotate your quilt every time so that the motion of the quilt was always going forward. But with rulers, we can just swing our ruler around and then quilt kind of a diagonal line. Diagonal lines or side to side lines, they can be a little bit more awkward when you're getting started with rulers, but once you kind of get into the groove, it's so much easier to just move a ruler than rotate your whole quilt. So I encourage you to kind of practice kind of using your ruler in all different directions. I would like to get to this corner right here. So again, I'm moving my ruler so that my edge of my ruler is about a quarter of an inch away from where I wanna be. Now I need to reorient my hands a little bit. I still wanna maintain a couple of fingers kind of in that crevice along the side of the ruler to kind of help stabilize it against the foot. And then the other fingers will help control it. Now there's not a lot of room over here for my kind of quilt hand. So I'm gonna just, Start here, and then I'll have to pause and change my hand so I don't kind of sew over it. Okay, I'm gonna pause, but I'm gonna keep this ruler hand where it is so that I don't kind of lose the orientation of my straight line. And I'm just gonna move my kind of quilting hand kind of somewhere safe. Now I'm in the other corner of the block and I have this really nice, super straight quilting line. Now I have a couple of options. I could continue to the next block or finish my design. It's whatever design you want to do in these blocks. I'm going to just kind of quilt the same kind of arrow shape in the eight blocks kind of surrounding this. And from here on out, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball my kind of goal dots instead of marking them all. So here it's kind of convenient to just move the ruler to the other side of my ruler foot. The ruler foot is round. You can have this ruler in any direction around the foot that you like and it will always be that quarter of an inch distance. So I stitched this line and now I'm gonna move my ruler back to my left hand where I'm most comfortable with it to continue the design. And that just saves me from having to rotate the entire quilt. Okay, 
There's our little dot to dot. This is a very simple design, but we can jazz it up. We could go back in here and add some free motion quilting on one or the other side of the line. We could also echo it. We could, instead of having our kind of gold dot about an inch away, we could go back and add another echo line that comes really close to this line using the same kind of outer anchor points, but bringing that dot out from the corner about a quarter of an inch or an inch or two inches. It's totally up to you. We could also kind of go in the opposite direction and make a diamond shape. The world is completely open to you. We could also grab a curved ruler and follow the same path, but we would have a little curved echo. Why don't I do that to show you the curved ruler? The curved ruler works just like the straight ruler in terms of aiming it. The only complication is you're going to have to remember to move along a curve. I find it a little bit trickier to keep a curved ruler kind of in place because that pressure that you are applying to it is moving a little bit as you go. So just go slow with a curved ruler the first few times. Again, I'm aiming about a quarter of an inch away from that same dot. And then I can move it around and go all the way around this star. Now, I'm using really small rulers here. If you're using a large ruler, like this larger curved ruler, then you want to be sure that you are only quilting kind of the width of your hand. So you want to hold the ruler next to where the needle is. You don't want to hold the ruler down here because then it's really unstable. And if you kind of apply some pressure, the whole ruler will move and kind of rotate out of the way. You want your rulers to be really stable. So if you're using a palm sized ruler, then it's really easy. If you're using a ruler that's bigger than your hand, make sure that you're, you're keeping your hands next to the needle, just like if you're free motion quilting. You don't wanna be holding the quilt over here and trying to sew over here because you won't have control. Now I mentioned earlier that I liked some of these curved rulers because you could quilt on either side. So just to show you, if I was you going to use the other side of this ruler, I would do the same thing. Keep this a quarter of an inch away from where I'm aiming, but now I'm going to be quilting along the inside of that curve. And there we go. There's our little simple ruler work sample. Now you can go a million different directions with rulers. I love to do dot to dot quilting. I like combining ruler work with free motion quilting. Just think if you filled in this inner star with some little swirls and then did something else on the outside, it would really kind of pop. And these little negative space areas that we created between these ruler work lines would really kind of pop out and they would be really noticeable if you did kind of dense fillers on either side. So that's the introduction to ruler work. It's a lot of fun. It definitely takes a little practice, but it is doable on any size quilt. Just remember to buy quilting rulers that are at least a quarter of an inch thick, and you'll need that quilting foot. All the other supplies are exactly the same. You can use the same needles, the same gloves that you like to use, the same marking utensils, same thread, everything. It's just the ruler and the ruler foot that you'll need to get in order to start ruler quilting. I did want to give you guys this one tip for consistency when you are doing ruler work on your quilt, and that's to make a little cheat sheet template. So this is my mirror diamonds quilt that I did ruler work on, and I wanted all of these diamonds to have the same distance between the lines of quilting. So I could have stopped and measured every time and drawn little dots and quilted to the dots, but I didn't do that. I measured once and made a template. So I took just a random piece of paper that I had lying around and I fold it a couple of times to make it just a little stiffer. If you have some cardstock around, then that would also work. 
So I just folded it in fours. If you want to stick a little piece of tape on here to keep it closed, that'd be great, but it's not necessary. And after I quilted this first diamond, then I took my little piece of paper and I laid it across the middle and I just made little notation marks where I wanted those lines to be. You can mark however it makes sense to you. I marked little arrows where the edges of the block would be, and then I just did dashes where I wanted those lines of quilting to be. And then when I moved to quilt the next diamond, I had my little cheat sheet ready to go. So I didn't have to get out a ruler and measure and find the midpoint anymore. I could lay down my little cheat sheet, align the corners, and then I took a fabric marker, which this is not, and I just drew dots where those lines should be. And then I could quilt to the dot and then back down here and then to the dot and to the corner and then straight across through that middle dot and following that. And that just saves you that step of measuring every single block when they're all the same. So make yourself a little cheat sheet. It's just a piece of paper. You could even fold it the other way and use the other edges to conserve paper if you so desired. But mine gets a little tattered after a whole quilt. But it's just a handy tip to save you from measuring the same thing over and over again. So if you really wanna try out the look of ruler work on a quilt without investing in all of the stuff, there are a few options. You can use your walking foot and that might require a lot of rotating your quilt sandwich to kind of get those uh, turns in the quilting lines. Or what you can do is use your free motion quilting foot but mark your quilt first with your normal cutting rulers. So you could take your quilt top or quilt sandwich if it's already assembled and mark out where you want your straight lines to be on your blocks and use your regular cutting ruler and a hair marker to mark those lines. And I know you guys probably can't see this hair mark because it is really just an indention more than it is a line. It's not drawing on your fabric, but I can see these lines really clearly from where I'm sitting. So that would give me a guide and then I could free motion quilt along that line. And just use my hands to get as straight as possible of a line. It won't be perfect, but when you stand back and look at the whole thing all put together, it'll look fantastic. So if you're not ready to jump into using actual rulers yet, then you can really simulate that feel with just your free motion quilting foot and what you have on hand. Definitely get a hair marker though, this thing is fantastic.